For the latest on all of this, we turn to Dina Temple Raston. She's the counterterrorism correspondent for NPR. Dina, thank you for being with us. Uh, tell us uh, just exactly what do authorities know? Well, actually, there's more that they don't know than what they know. But there was a source in Pakistan that uh, had suggested sort of a vague plot. The vague plot involved uh, at least three operatives, perhaps one American, perhaps a car bomb, uh, something to coincide with the 9-11 uh, anniversary. And it also seems that it was something that they had started. And that's what intelligence officials are trying to figure out now. What does started mean? Does that mean that they've already dispatched people? Does that mean it was planned? Does that mean people are here? So uh, in your piece, you talked about how they were scrubbing for information. What they're trying to do is take the information that they have from this one source and see how it might uh, sort of jibe with other things that they have been picking up over the last couple of months. Now, why are they focusing, apparently, on subways and bridges uh, and so forth? Well, I think that when you talk about car bombs and you want to have the maximum amount of damage, this is one of the places that al-Qaeda has uh, continually said it wants to focus on, particularly public transportation, because you can get a photograph of it and it disrupts life as usual. I mean, if you were in New York today, uh, I mean, the, the mayor took the subway because, frankly, if you were on the streets of New York today, you had a lot of trouble getting around. I've, I've never seen New York this way. It almost looks... Uh, like the attack has already happened. I mean, there are car, uh, police cars everywhere. There are barricades down Fifth Avenue. I mean, this has really been ramped up. I did interview, as we mentioned in that piece, John Brennan, the president's counterterrorism advisor, a couple of days ago. And he said ever since they, they went through uh, uh, Osama bin Laden's material when they killed him, uh, they've known that there was an interest in doing something on the anniversary of 9-11. So they've been looking for something, I, I gather. They have. And the reporting that we've been doing at NPR, what's been really unusual is in the run-up to this, to this anniversary, there has been very, very little evidence of chatter. It seemed like uh, al-Qaeda leaders had gone to ground because so many of them had either been uh, captured or killed by drone attacks. And uh, they, they just seemed like they were sort of huddled up. So this uh, particular intelligence uh, intercept that they got kind of surprised them because there had been silence for so long. So they're still investigating, is that right? That's exactly right. I mean, basically what happens is they get this intercept or they get a piece of intelligence that seems strong. And this particular source apparently has been very helpful to them in the past in corroborating, in corroborating other things that have happened. So uh, they put more stock in it. It's, it's interesting because it's different than the way the journalists work. You know, when you have an unconfirmed report, that's basically someone's giving you a hint and you try and get a second source. It doesn't really work that way with intelligence. The way it works with intelligence is generally it's whether you have faith in the source. It could be one source, but if you have a lot of faith in that source, that changes the way you react. And apparently this particular source, the way they got this piece of information, is something they have a lot of faith in. But Dina, at some point, if they don't get corroboration, how do they dial back the threat here? Well, that's, that's a great question. And, and the other problem is, as dribs and drabs of this story come out, in which, you know, they might be looking for three operatives in this country, there might be an American, there's a very good possibility that if that is in fact true, and we don't know it is, but if that is in fact true, that these people go to ground and wait until uh, the U.S. is not on such high alert. And this is one of the big concerns the intelligence community has with this story coming out in dribs and drabs the way it is. Well, I know you will continue to report and uh, we'll continue to follow. Thank you, Dina Temple-Raston. You're very welcome. Nice to be here.